Welcome back to Bash Frozen episode and episode 47 of Notorious Pro Wrestling, the TEW Let's Play series where we find out what exactly would happen if Conor McGregor started his own wrestling promotion. This is the go home show for our We Rise pay-per-view, our first pay-per-view of 2022. The P12 is back and is currently ongoing. Our Probably our biggest tournament within, well, our only tournament in PW. Yous were here last week, but let's take a quick look at the show. So last week's Wanda came in with a very, very, very strong 61. Uh, we had Maki Ito versus Mad Marley Quinn, which unfortunately led to Mad Marley Quinn fracturing her skull and being out injured for a year. <sighs> Moving on, Aussie Open gained a bit of momentum before their pay-per-view match uh, against Lycos Gym uh, by defeating Filthy Generation in a 51 which is pretty good and then a P12 match where Jay Lethal defeated Kenny Williams um, in a 60 match, was, which is pretty much what helped us get our 61 rated show. That with a little bit of help from Conor McGregor. <sighs> there is nothing really to discuss in terms of our company news, um, but, but, uh, but, 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 a little bit of world news, and that is that Awesome Kong has officially retired. Yes, Awesome Kong, we had her retirement match two pay per views ago, I believe it was. Um, where she faced Alpha Female, and yeah, I say it was something. <laughs> and yeah, I say it was a good match back then, and that led into Alpha Female feuding with Crazy Mary Dobson. But yes, Awesome Kong has officially retired from in-ring competition, and she is now a road agent. Um, she's not a bad road agent. Strong psychology, perfect uh, experience. Respect could be a little higher, but all in all, she would be an probably an asset to most up-and-coming companies. So the news is out of the way, the previous week's show is out of the way. Not much else to do than book this week's Wanted. And we are back. Um, let's not waste any time. Let's just get right in and blitz this bitch. Start the show. So in a backstage segment, Jake the Snake Roberts tells Sonico that he believes in him in this match against James Storm. So this is obviously a big change for Jake. Obviously he's been asking Sonico to prove himself. Uh, and then the reason why really he's done such a 180 is to wind up Pentagon. He, again, he believes has been besmirching or not respecting the MPW title enough. So now Jake, because he feels Pentagon doesn't respect the title, is starting to kind of play mind games with him and shower praise and such onto Sonico instead now. 54 rated segment. Then on to the match itself. So in a bite that had fantastic heat and great wrestling, Sonico defeated James Storm in 15 minutes. So James had a 52, Sonico had a 52 and Jake did some good work at ringside and uh, Jake and Sonico have good chemistry which we've established before. Drop down to a 51 probably due to its 15 minute length. Um, but overall still very good from both guys. In a backstage promo, Jen is interviewing Kings of the North who say Ireland and Northern Ireland deserve champions who love the country, not people who talk shit about it. Then they are interrupted by Grizzle Young Vets who say that those titles belong to them. Kings of the North are not jumping the queue to get a title shot. They deserve the title shot and they deserve the titles back. 40 rated segment overall. Moving on to the match itself, in an exceptional match, Kings of the North defeated Grizzly Young Vets in 15 minutes uh, to become the number one contenders, by the way, um, when Damian Corbin was pin pinned James Drake after the red hand of Ulster. Zach had a 60. Zach, man. Just a random wanted. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> Uh, James Drake had a 59, Damien had a 54, and Bones had a 52. Overall good, uh, 54 rated match. Um, the game is still telling me not to turn Damien Corvin face, but fuck the game, I do what I want. Uh, so yeah, Kings of the North got a win, a clean win. Again, we need to build, keep them strong for the match. So they're going to be facing against Dynasty for this month and the next month. 
maybe one more after that. Maybe we'll see. Um, so yeah, it, it was important to keep them strong. And you kind of no way to make them stronger than have them go over the previous champions to become number one contender. Then on to our main event in a bite that had fantastic heat and great wrestling. Viper defeated Martina uh, in 20 minutes with a Michinoku driver. Martina had a 51 and Viper had a 49. 50 rated overall. Uh, that is just all, just good. Just on the precipice of being good. Uh, Martina outperforming Viper. Considering Viper is, I thought she had up their game. Yeah, uh, this is not going to be a particularly strong TV taping, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get past it. Then post-match, Tessa comes out and brawls with Viper, during which though Zia, who is trying to break them up, accidentally gets hit by Viper, and she storms off, leaving Viper to try and reconcile with her and Tessa with a big old smile on her face. 57 rated segment, uh, which is strong. 51 rated show, that's okay. Um, there was no Conor McGregor promo to prop us up in the main event. Didn't uh, just a bite delivered, um, but overall it was okay. This was an okay show. So only news coming out of the tapings is that Levi Cooper, aka Tucker, and WWE again haven't been hasn't been released in the no notorious universe. Bullied a young fan on Twitter. Can't make this shit up anyway. <laughs> But that is us for another week. Next time you guys will be back, it is going to be the We Rise pay-per-view with Kings of the North taking on Dynasty for the NPW Tag Team titles, Aussie Open versus Lycos Gym in a hardcore match, so there's nowhere for Lycos Gym to run this time, Tessa versus Viper in a rematch for the NPW Women's Championship, and Easton Reese versus Pentagon Jr. for the NPW title plus some other matches that have yet to be announced. If you did enjoy this episode, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more episodes of Notorious Pro Wrestling, plus all our other great Bash Bro shows. If you have any ideas for future tag teams, rivalries, feuds, storylines, whatever it is, leave it in the comments and I will try book it for you. Some of my favorite content we have made is due to your guys' suggestions and I do appreciate it. With all that being said, I will see you next time on Bash Bros.